A lot of people think that jawline filler is going to be an answer to their prayers for achieving a snatched jawline. But in some cases, jawline filler can do the opposite. If you get filler to your jawline, it can actually make your jowls worse by making your jawline heavier. And if you're a woman, it can make your lower face look more masculine. I was trying to sharpen this area here and what it did was in fact just make it look bigger. Yeah, yeah. And it it had like jowls. I had jowls. Like, it's square head, yeah, just block square head. Square block head. Wow. It was me. Does this mean you should never use filler to jawlines to address jowls? I'm going to show you what you should be considering instead. And if there's a place for jawline filler, in treating jowls. I'll show you real patient before and afters on how I helped improve jowls. And I'm gonna show you a jowl severity scale to help you determine if you're a good candidate for non-surgical treatments for jowls. So stay tuned because we're starting right now. Jowls are excessive skin or subcutaneous fat that droops or sags around the jawline. So if you have excess skin and fat around your jawline, you don't want to make this area too heavy. When we treat any of the face with filler, essentially what we're doing is adding volume. Therefore, you cannot try to improve jowls by over-injecting the jawline with filler. Another reason you don't want to add too much filler here is because as we age, we lose our triangle of youth, which we spoke about in other videos. So we don't want to move you too far away from this triangle and give your lower face a bottom heavy look because we know the skin tissue tends to gravitate south anyway so solely relying on jawline filler to treat jowls is not the best strategy. So how do we address jowls and jawlines? One of the main things that contributes to jowls is the loss of volume to multiple different areas of the mid-face. This patient's jowls improved markedly after we treated her with four syringes to her mid-face. We did not treat her jawline with filler at all. I also like to inject the mid-face with Sculptra because filler is filling your skin. It's not a biostimulator where Sculptra is and it works within your skin to stimulate collagen and it's been shown to tighten skin and increase elastin. So can filler ever be used to treat jowls? Yes, it can. But the important thing is that you address volume loss to the mid face first and then consider treating your jawline. Where filler really comes in handy with treating our lower face is in helping address volume loss to our jawline area. And this is because one of the reasons we develop saggier skin around our jawline is because of bone loss. As we age, we lose bone everywhere, and that includes our jawbone or mandible. As the bone shrinks to this area, it leads to a smaller structure for the overlying soft tissues. So there's less bone for your soft tissue to anchor itself to, leading to more draping of the tissue, disrupting the smooth contour of our jawline. Filler along the jawline helps to create a more blended uniform look to help give the jawline back some definition. You can inject filler in the groove in front of the jowls. This is known as the pre-jowl sulcus. And interestingly, according to this article, correcting the pre-jowl sulcus usually needs more than just a facelift. It often involves adding volume through methods like facial fat transfer, implants, or in this case, filler injections. You can also treat behind the jowls, known as the post-jowl sulcus, and you can also inject the gonial angle to give the pre and post-jowl support. So in this way, jawline filler is adding definition and sort of camouflaging jowls. The gonial angle is an important area because I'm not sure if you know this, but when you treat the masseter muscle with Botox in order to do facial slimming, what can happen to some people is it can exacerbate their jowls because the volume back here in this area is what helps give our tissue support. So if that happens, you can put filler back here in the gonial angle to help give your jawline tissue back some of its support. Volux is our first, and when I say first, I mean first in the U.S. The U.S.'s first ever hyaluronic acid filler approved for the jawline. This patient was treated with Volux, and her jowls and the contour of her jawline have definitely improved, but it's important to know she had 10 syringes total seven syringes of Volux to her jawline, and three syringes of Voluma to her chin. Now, don't get me wrong, I love this product, and I'll be talking about this product for jawline enhancements. That's where I really love it. And I'm also gonna be discussing who are good candidates for jawline enhancements in another video, but is this even practical to use 10 syringes of filler to treat a person's jowls? Comment below and let me know what you think. In the study, they used 10 because they had to prove that jawline filler could be used to improve jowls and show what that looks like. And I'm sure that it was done over a period of time. Maybe they did three different sessions, but for this to be a real life practical example of a patient coming in bothered by their jowls and a provider treating them with 10 syringes of filler to their jawline and chin, that would be pretty expensive 
to just enhance one area of the face. But obviously, if someone didn't wanna go down the facelift route and they never had work done, they never had anything like injectables before and they're just getting started and they're in their 50s or 60s, then yeah, maybe. It's gonna take a lot. If she's in her 40s, maybe it would have only been two or three syringes. And this hits on the importance of starting earlier when you first start to notice things. I'm not trying to scare anyone into doing injectables. I'm just telling you that the latest you start, the more product you need. Here's a scale measuring the severity of jowl formation, which can help you determine if you're a good candidate for filler to your jawline. Zero is no jowls. There is no pre-jowl sulcus or hollowing in front of the jawline. One is mild sagging with mild hollowing of the pre-jowl sulcus. Two is moderate jowl formation and moderate hollowing of the pre-jowl sulcus. Three is severe sagging and hollowing to the pre and post jowl sulcus. And four is extreme. The jowl sags significantly below the jawline and there's a pre and post jowl sulcus. Grades one and two are good candidates for jawline filler. Three, it's gonna be more difficult to correct with jawline filler, but you can still likely get an improvement. And if you're four and your skin has lost a lot of elasticity and it drapes significantly below your jawline, you're likely not a good candidate for filler, sculpture, or any other non-surgical treatment, and you're likely a better candidate for surgery. Personally, I like to treat jowls by using a combination of sculpture and filler, and the filler being used more sparingly. This patient never had very prominent jowls. She had a lower facelift over 10 years ago, and I would put her at a three on this side and a two on this side. We always have one side of her face that ages more than the other. And after we treated her, she restored some of her triangle of youth in the after photo, and this was only after three vials of Sculptra and one syringe of filler to her lower face. And we will continue to do Sculptra as she loves her results and she could benefit from more based on the rule of decades, which we spoke about in this video. With filler, we targeted volume loss to her oral commissures, labial mental crease, and these areas right here, which are common areas we form shadows to as we get older. We also treated her mentalis muscle with Botox so it could relax the muscle. And the combination of filler and Botox to her chin muscle lengthened her chin and resolved the dimpling because it relaxes the muscle. And this muscle is one of my favorite areas to treat with Botox, especially in those whose chins are tense like this. And you can see all three of these treatments, Sculptra, filler, and Botox, helped improve her jawline. To find out what area of the face sculpture can be used to treat jowls and to see more real patient photos, be sure to check this video out after. But let's talk about another really important aspect of having a snatch jawline. Let's look at this article by Elle. All these jawlines on these women are very defined and what you would call snatched. Well, what do all these women have in common? Yes, they look fairly young, but they're very lean and likely to have a healthy BMI or possibly even low or underweight BMI. Your weight and body fat have a correlation with how defined your jawline is, and the heavier you are, the less definition you'll have to your jawline. People tend to put on extra pounds as they get older, adding around one to two pounds a year. This is supermodel Marissa Miller back in 2007, and this is now. Your body mass has a direct correlation to jowl formation. Your weight is a huge factor when it comes to getting filler, especially filler to your jawline. If you are overweight, you'll have more facial fat and volume around your jawline. The more weight you have, the less definition you have to your facial features and jawline. And this was discussed in great detail in the facial fat and attraction video. So if you're overweight and your facial fat is causing a loss of definition to your jawline, do you really wanna get jawline filler to add even more volume? The whole reason why we do cosmetic treatments is to look more attractive and attractive Attractiveness is intricately linked to your overall health. If excess weight is impacting your facial attraction, losing weight is gonna yield way more substantial and lasting health benefits than me injecting your jawline with filler to try to compensate for the lack of jawline definition from the extra weight. And if you lose weight, you're gaining three positives. You lessen your jowls, you get more jawline definition, and you'll become healthier and less at risk for heart disease, diabetes, and many other diseases. And you didn't have to spend a dime on filler. If you've watched my other videos on facial aging types, we discussed that if you're a sagger, you're more likely to form jowls. And if you have this facial aging type and a facial shape with a wider jawline, like round, square, or oval, but oval with a wide jawline, you have to be more careful in maintaining a healthy weight. The thicker your skin tissue, the more careful you have to be because these facial shapes have volume distributed more evenly between the upper and lower face, 
as opposed to the facial shapes which hold less volume to their lower face, such as heart and diamond face shapes. They don't tend to jowl as much. If you want to prevent jowls, take care of your teeth. Your bones of the jaw are preserved by your teeth, which puts pressure on your jawbone when you chew, bite, and clench your teeth. So when you lose a tooth, the bone of your jawline can weaken and deteriorate, and pretty fast too. Losing one tooth can cause up to 25% of bone loss in the first year, and this can shorten the height of your upper or lower jaw. If you're a woman in your 40s or 50s, you may want to think about hormone replacement therapy to help prevent bone loss. Estrogen-based hormone replacement therapy is the foundation of preventing bone loss. And in a study, it was found to have a significant protective effect on the jawbone or mandible. In this study, postmenopausal women with osteoporosis taking HRT had better bone mineral density than young healthy women without osteoporosis. Unfortunately, a lot of women were scared into taking hormones because of an old study back in the day. And a lot of healthcare providers are now coming out to say that the study was very flawed. And because of the study, all you ever hear is people talking about and focusing on are the risks of taking HRT without talking about all of the benefits of taking HRT or hormone replacement therapy. I know that not everyone is going to be a good candidate, but I would suggest that you start doing your research to learn more about it and what happens to our bodies when we lose estrogen. Anti-aging and prolonging health and learning how to prevent diseases is not something your medical provider, whether it be your primary care provider or OBGYN, will necessarily talk to you about because a lot of what we learn in medicine is focused on how to diagnose and treat diseases and prescribe medications to treat those diseases rather than disease prevention. No one is necessarily going to tell you, hey, this whole menopause thing, it's going to happen. And when it does, you're going to lose your estrogen and that's going to have a significant effect on your bone density. And it also puts you at higher risk for cardiovascular disease and dementia. Estrogen has a major effect on the quality of your skin. And when your body has less and less estrogen, its ability to produce quality collagen becomes compromised. You have to be your own healthcare advocate. And in today's digital world, you have the power to educate yourself. You don't have to rely on the advice from one sole healthcare provider to acquire knowledge. The health provider you choose choose to see in person or even virtually, they're not going to be able to take the amount of time to educate you compared to the education you can get online, especially on platforms like YouTube that allows for long form content. So if you want to snatch jawline, make sure you're taking all these things I mentioned in this video into account. But don't forget to watch these videos next on jawlines and jowls so you can learn how you can look more naturally beautiful.